Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be seeing if we can get this Proto 2000 Amtrak E9 diesel locomotive running again. This was a, a locomotive which was sent in a few months ago from a gentleman by the name of Eric. Unfortunately, after testing it, I discovered that it didn't run. I suspect it has some sort of an electrical issue because uh, after uh, putting it on the track, it didn't have any current draw. So I don't know exactly what's up with that. But uh, yeah, we're going to try to get this thing running again today. I'm uh, pretty excited to uh, work on this locomotive because uh, Proto 2000 engines and Proto 1000s alike are a lot like Atherin Blue Box locomotives. I suspect they had a deal with Atherin at some point because the drives are almost identical. Uh, unfortunately, the Proto models are not as reliable as the Blue Boxes. Uh, they're more detailed than the Blue Boxes were and uh, have more features, like this one has some lighting features on it. I already worked on one that was similar uh, to it, so I uh, know that, but uh, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, they're not as reliable, uh, despite being kind of more prototypical models. So, uh, yeah, something's up with this one, but we're going to try to get it kicking again. Let's begin. So to begin, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set it up on the track, just so I can show all of you exactly what the situation with this model is, and uh, kind of just check it out a little bit, see if it will do anything whatsoever, and just kind of try to get a better idea of what's going on with it. So I'm now going to put uh, 8 volts in the track, and uh, there actually is a light on, which I don't recall there being last time. Um, I'm wiggling it on the track, I don't see any current draw, but um, that actually, I believe, was different, I don't recall that. In fact, as I wiggle it on the track, I just felt the motor, for just a moment, go a little. I, I felt uh, just a little bit of vibration. I'm going to give it full power, and... Uh, We'll see if it will just start up. This could just be as simple as a uh, loose soldering connection, but I, I can't entirely tell. Yeah, when I wiggle it like this, it, there's just a little something there. Well, in any case, it doesn't seem to want to start, so we're clearly going to have to uh, crack this model open. But uh, that's kind of promising that uh, it showed a little bit of signs of something. So let's bring it back over to the workbench and uh, see if we can figure out what's going on with this thing. So we're now going to crack this locomotive open and see if we can figure out what's going on with it. Uh, there are four tabs in total, two on each side. So we're just going to uh, kind of get our fingers under this section right here and just sort of pull up. And uh, provided we do that on both sides, the shell should lift off like so. In some cases you may have a coupler going through the shell, but... Um, this has got a kind of strange coupler, so it doesn't seem to be a problem. Now, uh, the last time I worked on one of these models, the circuit board, I believe, was bad. I'm really hoping that the circuit board on this model is good. I suspect that it is, because the light did turn on for a second, and there did seem to be some stuff from the motor, so I think we're just dealing with a bad soldering joint somewhere. I also don't want to remove this board and bypass it because I believe that uh, all these diodes right here are part of some sort of Mars lighting system on the headlight. Uh, I believe I read that in the instruction booklet on the last model I worked on. So uh, yeah, we're going to try to leave that board intact if we can. I'm just going to give uh, all these wires a slight tug just to check uh, to see if the connections are good. You know, if they're loose, the wire will obviously pop out. Uh, these wires right here are a little bit harder to access, but we can actually see the soldering joints. And um, they appear to be okay, so that's quite confusing because uh, that wouldn't appear to be our problem. So uh, I could try removing the board, just see uh, if maybe any of, uh, any of the joints on the board there are maybe dry. Uh, that's always a possibility, so why don't we have a look at it? So just having a look over this board, all the connections appear to be good. Um, the only thing I do find a little bit suspect about it is, I'm not sure how well you can see this, but um, right hereabouts, there's actually just a little bit of solder uh, left over from something. So I'm not sure if maybe there's a part here that somebody at some point decided to remove. Um, the question is just whether or not whatever might have been removed there was important or not. 
you know, there are all these spaces for other things. I suspect these were never used, but I just find that that is a little suspicious of something. Um, but in any case, I'm going to keep looking uh, in other spots because uh, this is not necessarily where our problem is. It could be something else. So uh, I'm going to keep looking around. We can always bypass this board, but as I said earlier, I'd prefer not to just because uh, it does add some extra features to the locomotive. What I'm going to attempt now is just hooking some leads up directly to uh, the wiring in this engine just to make sure that the trucks are doing their job. And I'm putting some power on there. And I'm not seeing anything from that side. I guess we could try hooking these directly up to the board. So we're going to find out what wires go where. So you can see we got a blue wire and a red wire. And we'll just follow where those link up. And what we see right here is that the blue wire actually doesn't uh, hook up to the board. It seems to bypass it. Um, we do have this wire. I don't know where this goes. This might connect to the blue wire under here, but I'm not entirely sure. I did work on one of these before, but uh, I can't remember exactly how they were wired, so I'm not entirely sure what we're looking at here. But um, this is a piece of interest, because it could have something to do with that yellow wire. So maybe what we really should be doing is we should be lifting up this and making sure the connections down there are good. Because if this wire is required for bringing power to the lights, um, you know, it could explain why uh, this isn't all working. So why don't we have a look at that? Oh no. What the heck is that? Well, I don't know uh, what exactly happened to this model, but um, I don't know if like a spider tried to build a nest in here at some point, or if somebody was trying to clean this commutator and they got this all gummed up, but this is really bad inside here. Oh no. Well, you know, it's, it's very possible if that wire which connects up to the lights, uh, the power for that has to flow through the motor first, that this commutator being dirty is the source of our problem. And if we clean that, this thing might fire right to life. Um, I really hope that that's the case. I, I wish I could tell everybody what this is. I'm guessing uh, a spider at some point crawled in here and tried to build some sort of a nest, but... Um, I've never encountered something like this before. This is a very unusual find, but it just looks very silky. So I, I, yeah, I don't know. This is one of the strangest things I've ever seen when opening up a, a model. I really hope all the uh, wires are okay. Definitely looks like somebody tried to run this with uh, all this stuff inside and it did move a bit. It might be just when I tried to start it up and it felt like it was trying to turn over, but yeah, what a what an unusual thing. Yeah, look at all this crud. Okay, well that's looking a little bit better. Let's uh, clean that off too. Let's try uh, cleaning this up a bit with our fiberglass pencil, see if that makes 
any difference. Yeah, it's already looking a whole lot better. Well, I've got that all cleaned up, and I've got to say it really is looking quite a bit better. And uh, now I just want to see if this thing will fire up uh, after being cleaned. Uh, this is a bit of an unusual wiring configuration, but it would make sense that if the negative of this is required to power the lights and everything else, that a dirty commutator could be the source of the problem for this locomotive. So, uh, yeah, let's try uh, giving it some power here. If this thing fires up, um, this will be a first for something, uh, you know, an unusual thing preventing a locomotive from running. So I'm going to turn up our power here. I'm just going to put a bit of power on each of these leads. And uh, you see that? It's turning. Let's try that again. It's trying to go. Yeah, it's running. You can see the uh, light coming on there too. I think just because of how everything is positioned right now, it's struggling a little bit. But um, yeah, it would appear that that was the source of our problem. Wow. Uh, yeah, I've probably restored over 100 model trains uh, over the last 10 years. And I've got to say, this is uh, really a first for repair. What an unusual thing to encounter. Well, that seems to be good. Uh, I guess we'll just uh, put everything back together and hopefully this whole thing will run. I haven't checked the wheels and everything else. I mean, it could have more than one problem, but um, yeah, I have to say, I really was not expecting that. What an unusual problem. All right, so our model is almost completely back together. I did try to put the wires back in uh, place as well as I could to keep things kind of clean. Uh, luckily, the little adhesive uh, strips that they put here, uh, you can stick things to them over and over again. So uh, these wires actually stuck right back on. So that was good uh, foresight on Proto's parts. Uh, before I put the shell back on, I just want to fix something. Uh, at one point or another, I somehow messed up the door on this model. Um, Proto actually did put opening doors on their models, which was a, a pretty cool feature. I guess you could put figures in the cab, you know, getting out if you wanted to. But um, yeah, I somehow messed up this door. So I want to have a look at that and see if I can correct it. It, it would be nice if, uh, if I could fix this. I don't exactly know what happened, but... I clearly did something to it. Let's see if I can get that back around there. I think if we just kind of slide both. Oh, okay, that's what I didn't want to happen. This is a very unusual setup. I don't even see a spring or anything here. It's possible that this used to be spring loaded and at some point the spring got lost. So I could just put a little dab of glue here and call it a day. 
because I don't really intend on using this door. And uh, if ever I want to put it back, um, I'm going to put a really small amount of glue so it really won't uh, make this permanent. Actually, I just changed my mind. I discovered this didn't actually really break off, um, as in no parts actually broke. You can see these have like a little wedge. So you just slide that uh, into place with the door in place, uh, presumably. And then this should hold it. There we go. All right, let's get this uh, shell back on the model now. As I did before, we just kind of lower it down and uh, get those tabs on each side around the little circular parts. So let me get this low enough for it to reach. All right, there we go. Why don't we bring this thing over to the track and uh, test it out, see if we've got a runner. I'm really curious to see if this thing's gonna start up. That little test we did on the workbench was uh, certainly promising, but uh, you know, sometimes you encounter more than one problem, so you never know. But if I give this some power, we've got a headlight. That's not good. Oh, okay. Um, that's really weird. It's a little bit derailed. I might have just put it on the track incorrectly. That was sort of weird. It's like it didn't want to start the first time and then I threw it in reverse and it fired right up. And this doesn't want to sit on the track very well. Now, the last model I worked on had a bit of a problem with its wheels uh, where the gears were actually allowing the wheels to kind of separate. So it's possible the wheels on this are out of gauge and I actually just can't put it on the track correctly because of that. But... Um, I mean, it is moving. Yeah, it'd be nice if I could get these all on. Yeah, something doesn't seem quite right about that. I tried just uh, pinching all the uh, wheels back together. So they're engaged now. This isn't a permanent fix by any means, but uh, we should be able to see if this thing will work. Unless, of course, it has the same problem that the other engine had, which was shorted wheel sets. Anyway, if it, yeah, <laughs> check this out over here. Completely shorted. So just like last time, it seems that the wheel sets, uh, unfortunately, the nylon, which grips around them, has come undone. And uh, when the wheel sets were out of gauge, they weren't touching each other. But now that I've actually pinched uh, the wheels back together, the axles are touching each other, causing a short circuit. So uh, in order to get this thing running again, what I need to do is bring it back over to the workbench, take all the wheels out, put some CA uh, in all of them, and it should work. It's not the greatest fix out there, but um, it worked on the last locomotive, and I really don't see a, a, a good reason why it shouldn't work on this one. If worse comes to worse, I'll just replace the wheel sets at some point, but uh, for now it should be fine. So we're now going to take the wheel sets apart and uh, see if we can fix the problem. Uh, like I said, I did do this once before successfully, so uh, that is kind of optimistic for this particular model. Uh, we'll just kind of get a screwdriver under here. I usually, I'll sometimes use a Phillips and I'll just kind of twist and the little edges on the end there will actually catch these and help lift them off. Uh, you have to be kind of gentle though. These are not as tough as the one, uh, the ones that they used to put on the Athern models. They're a little bit thinner, so you do have to be kind of gentle. Um, you know, as I was saying earlier, these are very similar to Athern Blue Box engines, but they were not built as tough. And uh, well, this is a perfect example. Um, I don't recall ever encountering this issue with the wheels, the axles of the wheels touching each other. Uh, it, I, but now I've encountered it twice on Proto models. So we'll now try to remove these each. I don't know if this gearbox needs to be turned while well. you access these gears, or it could just be that 
Oh, you know what it is? It's, I forgot. Uh, these have little covers on them. So, you also have to pull those out at the same time. So, what I need to do is just do that, and they'll come right out. Sorry, I can't get Atherin Blue Box out of my head. On an Atherin model, you just pop these right out, but uh, Proto made these a little fancier, so you have to work around those while you get the wheels out. I mean, it's more, way more prototypical, but it's more difficult to work on. I just need to get those last clips off. I might use a flatheads just to get in there. It will probably be a little easier. Actually, I'm going to use a, a blade, but that's kind of risky. But I'm going to do it anyway. I don't want to try that. It's too risky. And there we go. That was more complicated than it kind of needed to be, but at the end of the day, we got it off. All right. Just want to show people a little bit of what I've done to the rest of these wheel sets. And take this out, put a little bit of crazy glue down. Um, your workbench is probably not the best surface, but if you spill it, you know, don't let it go to waste. So you do that and you get it right on the end, hold it like this. You do not want to get that on your bearing. If you get it in your bearing, it's obviously gonna cause problems. And you just try to like get it in there. Now, before I did put some plastic shavings in one of these, I didn't do that this time. Now there is a risk, which is that, you know, if the crazy glue doesn't insulate, uh, which is always a possibility, uh, you're just gonna end up with another short. But uh, at the same time, I just don't wanna risk putting the wheels too out of gauge. Uh, also, after I'm done, I also make sure that the bearing is in fact not seized, cause that is a risk. These are loaded up with oil and stuff, which is actually a really good thing when you're putting glue nearby, cause if you do accidentally get some glue on here, uh, usually you can just crack it right off. The glue will not bond to the oils, but uh, yeah, just make sure the bearing isn't like stuck to this. So yeah, then you just let them dry and uh, later we'll be able to put these back in the model and they should be good. Uh, before I go putting these back though, I actually am going to uh, put them on my track and just see if they short. Uh, Cause there is no point in, you know, having to put these all in the model just to take them all out. So there's all the little devils are on the track and I'm putting power in the track. You can see no current draw. I roll them around a little bit. Absolutely nothing. Exactly what we want to see. These wheels are going to be a real pain in the neck to get back into the locomotive, but uh, we may as well try not to destroy the model by using uh, this thing. Uh, I probably should have brought this out earlier, to be honest, but uh, better late than never, I guess. So we're now going to uh, try to get these wheels back in. Now, the main thing on both Atherin Blue Box and Proto Engines is getting your bearing straight. And we're just going to try to lift these up, try to get the axles actually into the little pockets. Okay, yeah, we lost one of the pockets. I'm pretty sure you can get those back in afterwards. So it's not necessarily a lost cause, but it would be better if we didn't. I'm going to try something a little different, actually. I'm going to try getting one side in first this time, see if that makes a difference. Yeah, actually, I don't think that's gonna work. Nope. Okay, that one didn't go too bad.
All right, we got this thing all back together. Why don't we take it over to the track and uh, see if our efforts now have paid off. All right. Well, seems to be sitting on the track correctly. That's a plus. Now, uh, yes, look at that. And if we got reverse, yes, we do. Very nice. All right. Well, then, let's uh, take this thing for a run around the layout, why don't we? Look at that light shining all bright, too. Really sharp. Yeah, I really like that. These uh, E9, E8 locomotives, I really do like them. It's like I'm already a pretty big fan of F units, so it's like a jumbo F unit. I mean, it really doesn't get better than that. And uh, i got to say, Proto did do a pretty nice job with uh, these models. So, yeah, I'm quite impressed with that. Current draw seems moderate, so that's good. It's running fairly uh, efficiently. Yeah, it seems to be pretty quiet, too. So, yeah, I think it's safe to say Serenity. Well, might have taken a fair bit of uh, effort to, you know, get uh, all those wheels sorted out, but uh, I think it's paid off. I think this is uh, running really nice now, and uh, I think it's a uh, really, well, it's just a pretty nice locomotive in general, too. So, yeah, really, really pleased with uh, how, this, uh, how this one turned out. I'm glad the uh, circuit board was in good shape, too. It's nice. It doesn't appear, I forgot of course this only has one headlight, the other one had two. So the other one I think did have a Mars light. Um, so I don't know what all those diodes are in uh, the case for this locomotive, but uh, the lighting does look good on it. So uh, in any case, you know what, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? I know what I have uh, going on right here isn't exactly ideal, but I figured we had to throw some passenger cars behind this thing. So why not some streamlined ones that are also silver? And uh, you know what, I don't think it looks too bad, really. I know it's uh, Canadian Pacific via and Amtrak, but uh, you know what, it definitely could be worse. So, yeah, there she is actually pulling some stuff. Well, folks, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. Eric, if you're watching this, thank you so much for sending this locomotive in. It was really generous of you, and it was really quite a, a treat to get to work on this one. It was something a little bit different, so uh, yeah, that's always exciting. Anyways, with that, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching.